Hello, my name is Cyrus Paraka from the University of Michigan, and I'm going to discuss our paper in the October 2011 Gastrointestinal Endoscopy Journal titled Factors Associated with Esophageal Stricture Formation After Endoscopic Mucosal Resection for Neoplastic Barrett's Esophagus. First, I'd like to start by talking about uh, why we uh, chose to look at this particular issue with uh, Barrett's uh, and EMR. Um, <clears throat> previously, we had uh, an abstract in, uh, in DDW demonstrating that there are areas that uh, may be visibly non-nodular that on EMR specimens show uh, cancer. This prompted us to favor doing EMR uh, over uh, RFA as our primary modality for, for the majority of our patients with high-grade dysplasia and intramucosal cancer. Um, we've had virtually no complications with perforations or virtually no uh, issues with delayed bleeding. But we have had <clears throat> patients, uh, a number of patients develop symptomatic esophageal strictures. We sought to uh, identify the factors that may be associated with stricture formation to minimize the risk of that occurring in the future. We note that previous data has been published uh, on the topic of stricture formation with endoscopic therapy for parents with high-grade dysplasia and cancer. Uh, this data is a bit of a mixed bag, uh, some, some data relating uh, stricture formation risks in patients with multiple modalities of therapy, and several studies looking at risk factors for stricture formation from photodynamic therapy alone. Uh, some of the data that has been borne out from these studies has shown that the risks of strictures with photodynamic therapy include length of Barrett's that's treated, presence of intramucosal cancer, uh, or a number of sessions of photodynamic therapy. We studied uh, uh, varying factors, including patient-related factors, such as smoking history, uh, use of PPI and NSAIDs, prior history of stricture formation, um, as well as age, gender, and BMI. We looked at factors related to the anatomy, including the presence of a hiatal hernia, the presence of a nodule or intramucosal cancer, uh, and the length of uh, Barrett's that was involved. And finally, we looked at procedure factors, including the number of pieces that were resected, uh, the length that was resected, and the degree of circumference that was resected. We didn't look at any more specific procedural factors uh, uh, related to type of resection as they were almost universally done with a band EMR technique. Um, the one thing that we do that deviates from what uh, is commonly done for band EMR is that we uh, do lift uh, prior to banding. Uh, we put 1 to 60,000 epinephrine dilution with a touch of methylene blue and we feel that the methylene blue staining helps to outline any dysplasia that may be on the mucosa and following the resection allows us to see the base nice and clear to know what we've resected and to be certain that there's no evidence of a perforation or any reddish brown tissue that may suggest that we have transected a more deeply invading tumor than previously anticipated. It allows us to see the margins to begin uh, uh, the next uh, resection uh, uh, piece uh, adjacent to what's already been done and we actually lift into the margin of it to separate it out to make it easier to capture the margin itself. In fact, frequently the margin goes above the rubber band and we snare it almost universally below the rubber band. Um, and uh, the expansion of the submucosa makes this safe and easy to get a nice contiguous resection that uh, when, we're all, when it's all said and done, there's no intervening tissue uh, or, uh, or bridging between specimens of resection and the final product looks quite similar to an ESD. Uh, the type of uh, cautery that we use uh, uh, tends to be an endocut cautery with more cut than coag, um, and this minimizes uh, any deep cautery, and this may affect things as well, but again, almost all of our patients were done with this type of uh, a current. What did we find? Well, on uh, univariate analysis, we found that the following factors was, were associated with stricture formation. Uh, the total number of pieces resected, the degree of circumference resected, the length of resection, and the number of sessions of uh, EMR that were done. Furthermore, we found that there was an association with smoking, uh, with a smoking history, uh, uh, with the presence and formation of strictures. On multivariate log logistic regression, we eliminated the total number of pieces and number of sessions resected as we felt they were collinear with the degree of circumference that, that was resected during EMR. On this uh, uh, analysis, um, we found uh, that there was still an association with a threshold of greater than 50% resection um, uh, with the uh, formation of strictures. There was a trend uh, of an association with smoking history of greater than 25 pack years with stricture formation, but this did not reach statistical significance. It's partly of interest what was not associated with stricture formation. 
uh, specifically length of resection in the presence of cancer. cancer. Um, and this differs from uh, some prior data from uh, uh, the use of photodynamic therapy as a primary treatment modality for uh, hyperdysplasia and cancer. One other thing of particular interest that came out from the study is that although nearly 25% of patients develop symptomatic strictures from EMR for Barrett's with hyperdysplasia and cancer, 94% of them responded to a single dilation procedure. This suggests that although strictures um, uh, although strictures may form uh, with some frequency with an endoscopic mucosal resection, it, it need not be uh, a feared complication of the procedure. This particular finding of ease of dilation differs from that experience from photodynamic therapy, where the strictures tend to be quite difficult to treat and recur quite frequently. It's unclear why strictures that form from EMR are easier to treat than those from PDT, but it may have to do with the depth of injury that is involved uh, from our procedure. Um, although this may be a universal thing with uh, EMR because the depth of resection goes to the submucosa, it's plausible and possible that the use of lifting um, with uh, uh, dilute epinephrine uh, in saline um, and uh, or even the use of a, uh, more of a cut uh, current for cautery may reduce the depth of injury uh, sustained from mucosal resection. And this may make the strictures that form easier to treat because they do not, do not involve deeper submucosa or even muscular as appropriate. So what do we take from this and how do we use this uh, data to help our patients? Well, we can't tell someone to not have smoked in the past, but we can use this data as support to ask them uh, uh, to discontinue smoking presently. With regards to our treatment modality, however, we still tend to be quite aggressive when there is suspected or known uh, intramucosal adenocarcinoma in our patients. We'd rather get a good oncolog oncologic resection with wide, clear margins than be concerned about the development of a stricture, particularly since we know that the strictures tend to be treated quite easily with a single dilation in the vast majority of patients. Therefore, if we suspect that there's an intramucosal adenocarcinoma, we will favor doing uh, a resection of any area that appears nodular and appears suspicious or known for adenocarcinoma with a wide margin resection, disregarding the circumference resected if it's necessary to resect uh, a greater than 50% circumference. However, if we feel that we can safely get a wide margin with 50% circumference resection or less, or if someone has high grade dysplasia alone, we will favor doing uh, a 50% circumference in one session um, and then doing the other half at a second session. Now, this is to minimize uh, the uh, risk of a stricture interfering with our ability to complete therapy of the residual Barrett's. If it is bland and biopsies show no hygrodysplasia um, or no, nothing concerning for adenocarcinoma, it doesn't, it's also not unreasonable and there's clearly data to support the idea of doing focal resection for anything abnormal and doing ablation of any residual mucosa. Um, however, in the context of patients where we uh, feel strongly that it's necessary to obtain tissue for diagnostic purposes as well as therapy, this is the approach that we would use. And this uh, study, I think, supports that approach. Thank you very much for uh, listening, and I uh, hope you enjoy the paper.